So you may have remembered a few months ago I did a review of a brand new wedge from a brand new company, Smithworks, which was actually a non-conforming wedge and by heck did that spin, it had loads, so much fun filming that video. Clearly it was non-conforming, can't play with it in competitions, but it was really good fun for maybe the type of golf who just wants to have some fun and spin those balls back on the green. Inceptional, exceptional amount of spin generated with those wedges. They've now brought out a conforming wedge, so very similar in design and the technology in the head, the vertical um, balance of the golf club. Same real sort of look, but obviously the grooves are now in that conforming area, all passed by the RNA. Um, and they are claiming, Smith Hooks claim this is spinning more than any other wedge on the market. Your big brands, Vokies, Callaways, etc. So I'm going to test that today. I've got them in my hands. I've got a 52, a 56 and a 60. They do two finishes, the black finish and the chrome finish. I've got GC quads. So we're going to get some dry data to start with, compare some numbers. And then we may move on to the golf course and see how it actually reacts into the greens. Okay, so I'm going to start off, I've set myself up about 96 yards from the green on the GC quad on the simulator. I'm going to hit some shots with my 56 degree, which is typically around that, just short of that 100 yard sort of mark and a sort of smooth 56. Got uh, TaylorMade TP5X balls, which is what I play with. Feels lovely off the club face. Feels grippy, be interesting to see how that sort of reacts. Yeah, that's stopping pretty quick. That spun it, yeah, just sort of over that 10,000 mark. Great feel, it feel, again, they feel very grippy off the club face again over that 10,000. The look of these wedges is very different, as you can appreciate. You know, the grooves go right to the end of the golf club. We've seen that in maybe some of the manufacturers there. Um, we've got some sort of pretty deep grooves within legal regulations, as you'd expect. We've then got this sort of X in, these sort of crosses on there, which is now laser mill. So in the non-conforming wedge, they were actually stamped into the head. So they're like another set of grooves in a way on top of the actual grooves, which clearly made it non-conforming. So this is now conforming because of the more etched there, as in um, sort of that laser milling into the club face. So it's still creating as much abrasion on there as possibly you can within the, again, the legal limitations. Okay, that's a little bit low in the club face. I expect that to maybe just spin a touch more. Yeah, quite similar actually, just sort of over that 10,000 mark. It hasn't actually changed there. Sometimes you get those real low ones in the face, you just see them nip a little bit more. Okay, that feels superb. Love the feel of that. So I've got these in the bag at the moment. I'm playing with these because I'm quite enjoying them. Um, again, 10,300, so, so consistent on that spin number there. And in an area that I would typically like to sort of see it. So I know that hitting into the flag, if that flag's tucked behind that bunker, I've got some real good stopping power there. Right, okay, just had to take my top off, getting a little bit warm down here at Lytham, which is nice. Um, so now switching into the Cleveland RTX4 wedge. So just wanna hit some shots with this, and uh, same loft, and you know, just get a comparison to the spin number. So this is a, a wedge that's literally been hit an odd couple of times, so pretty much brand new, very fresh grooves, same loft at 56 degree, and obviously the cleave and the RTX4, a lot of circular milling, which is the Rotex, so we've got milling across the grooves, maxed out grooves, then circular milling, so it's all about, again, roughness of the club face. So I thought this is a really good test to put the Smithworks wedge up against. So that strike felt really nice. Okay, so that's spawned at 9,800. So the first one that's just dropped underneath that 10,000 mark. Again, feels great. Nothing wrong with the feel off that wedge. That particular one, again, 9,800. So consistent, but straight away a little bit less spin compared to that Smithworks. Works. 
So we'll look at those numbers there. So we hit the shots there with the Smith Works wedge, 56 degree, and you can see the average there is 10,260 RPMs in that backspin and nothing dropped below the 10,000 mark and very, very consistent. You know, my, I'll move my strike a little bit, but really quite consistent sort of numbers ranging from sort of 10,100 um, to about 10,400. So quite a nice tight sort of number. So very consistent how that ball's coming into that land. Moving into that Cleveland RTX. So again, pretty consistent, but in a slight lower bracket. Didn't get one above the 10,000 spin number and averaging there at 9732. Last one there you can see just dropped off a little bit more. Um, again, through that little bit of change of strike, subtle there, but a little bit more variance of the top to bottom, but ultimately it's in that slightly lower bracket compared to the Smithworks. Not by massive amounts, but again, I thought the RTX was a good one to test because of the roughness of the face with what's happening with the two sets of laser milling and the circular sort of milling, which is the RTX technology. Um, I thought it was a really good one to put up against the Smithworks. Okay, so we've jumped out on the golf course. We're gonna put these Smithworks wedges to the test, see how they react as they come into land on the green. That's the important thing. So as I say, these are the conforming version. I've got 56 here, set myself up a bow. I'm about sort of 95 yards, which is similar to what I hit in the studio there. So I'm going to hit some shots, see how it reacts and it hits the green. Okay, not a bad opening shot there. That felt really good off the club face. Yeah, good luck to be stopping pretty quickly. Okay, so they're feeling pretty good. So let's talk a little bit about the technology in the club. And there's quite a bit happening in this uh, Smith Burks wedges. So first of all, we're going to start a little bit about their main bit of technology, which is called uh, vertical balance. So this is where they're moving weight more up the, the blade length, so more towards that top edge. You probably see the top edge of the club is a little bit thicker there. That's basically where the more weight is. So reposition it from that bottom, more up that club face. So what that is basically doing is moving that center gravity higher up the club face. So generally with a wedge, you'll strike it more lower in the club face. So when you strike it below the center gravity in the head, the ball tends to come out a little bit lower, but same theories as with the driver, when you strike it low in the face, it packs more spin on it. And this is what this is about, it's getting a little bit more extra spin and grip around that green. So strike it lower CG, just gets that launch a little bit lower and just gets a little bit more spin involved. So to do that and reposition the weight, they've got those three holes in the back of the head there, which obviously taking weight out, reposition at the top. We've also got some sort of uh, like shaving of metal out of the back of the hosel. Again, it's saving that crucial weight, repositioning it in that club face more higher up to get that vertical balance. We've got a lovely mill sole on the on the sole of the club here and it's sort of relieved off in that toe and heel section so very good I think when you're sort of opening the club face um, around the green those different lies that you generally experience with a wedge that's really going to help you out and then also the other main aspect here is got the grooves going all the way to that toe end so again when you're opening the blade up maybe coming out of rough we tend to see some strikes get high toe maybe as you're working the club across that golf ball so the grooves up into, right into that toe section obviously we've seen that with other brands as well um, creates that real good grip from that toe strike that you tend to get more out of that rough. Obviously we've got those deep grooves, we've got those laser milling on there, they've got the X's which are laser milled, so really trying to get as much abrasion on that face as possible within RNA, uh, obviously regulation, so it is legal this wedge. I did do a video uh, a few months back which was the non-conforming, so some of you said, well what's the point of having a non-conforming wedge? So but there's a lot of guys out there don't play competitive golf, they want to have some fun and that's what that non-conforming wedge is all about. I'll tell you what, I had loads of fun filming with that, hitting into the green, just seeing it ripping back was, was brilliant. It wasn't great for your golf balls but a lot of lot of fun. Right, okay, so just moved myself in uh, about 50, 55 yards but now into the rough and we can see we've just got some little bit of a different lies here now so we're going to see going to use my 50, uh, sorry 60 degree going to see how this reacts out of this rough and it's a little bit damp this morning in the rough so it's not everything against sort of creating spin it's going to be taking spin away with that particular lie into this green let's see how this 60 degree reacts out of the rough yeah this is a really tough test for this wedge in this particular shot because again the rough's damp it's a little bit downdraft and the greens are pretty firm so it's everything 
sort of going against trying to get some stop and getting that ball stopped but it's ultimately testing this wedge and these are the situations you get into on the golf course it's downwind, it's firm, out of the rough, it's damp it's going to be tough to stop that golf ball so a really good test for this wedge Yeah, I mean, they're not ripping back, but they're stopping pretty quick. It does feel really nice with this wedge and the sole, it cuts through the grass really, what feels very, very easy, it just sort of glides through and just gets the club working through that golf ball really well. Okay, let's see what these are in and around the green. Again, that was amazing. The sole on that 60 degree wedge just chamfered off in that heel and the toe section, really slid that under. That was a proper Phil Mickelson style. -y. Okay, so there we go. There's the Smith Works wedges. I'm quite a big fan of them, they are in my bag. I enjoy the sort of feel that come off the club face, love the control they get. Definitely sort of seen in that dry test in the date, uh, sorry, in the studio, a little bit more spin than that RTX 4, which again had that R uh, Rotex milling, a lot of milling on the club face. Seen some good stopping power out here. That's a tough test today because I had some firm greens, downwind shots out of the rough. We're not going to get this ball ripping back, so it's all about making those particular situations on the golf course where you can get a waist that can control that as much as possible. So, post your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on the Smith Works wedges. A very different brand, new brand to the golf market. I'll put a little link in the description down below. You can go to the website, check them out. They sell direct online. Um, some different finishes. They look really nice, a little bit different. Back the underdog a little bit in a way, uh, but gets a big tick from me. Okay, guys, thanks very much for watching. Appreciate watching as always. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, smash it. Hit the bell icon so you get notifications of any future videos. Follow my social media platforms, both Instagram and Twitter, and hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon.